emotive speech, the speech of alluring speech with one's wife or with one's partner or with one's spouse. But there is a general prohibition. Tie the ihram of this tongue. Tie the ihram of this tongue. Tie the ihram of this tongue. Ghibat, backbiting, slandering, hurting the feelings of others. Unnecessary speech, what we call behuda kalam, useless speech. This ihram, this ihram has to be tied till mort. This power of speech which Allah has given. We take it for granted. This is such an ajeeb, such an astonishing mazhara, display of the qudrat and the power of Allah. When Allah speaks of this particular ni'mat and bounty of speech, the Quran tells us, Allamahul bayan. Allah taught you how to speak. When Allah refers to this, what does Allah say? Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahman. Allama al-Qur'an Khalaq al-Insan Allama bayan What does this mean? This surah begins in an, This surah is Rusul Qur'an The bride of the Qur'an And how does Allah introduce this Qur'an? Ar-Rahman How does Allah introduce this surah? Ar-Rahman The benevolent The kind Rahmat Mercy Compassion The kind Allah The merciful Allah Rahman Allah and what is the manifestation, the proof? This is da'wah and dalil. Allah makes a claim. Allah is very merciful, very kind, very compassionate. And what is the proof of it? Allamahul bayan. Allah gave you the ability to speak. My thoughts you can't see. Can you see my thoughts? In seconds, milliseconds, what I am thinking is being trans- transformed into electrical impulses. They are traveling at the speed of 124 kilometers per hour to my tongue. The movement of my tongue also you can't see. Sound waves are being produced. In each of your ears, Allah has placed 100,000 receptors for sound. These sound waves are being carried on the shoulder of Allah's wind. They are striking those receptors. Behind those receptors are three, three bones, hammer, stirrup, anvil. They amplify these sound waves. Behind that, there is the inner ear or the cochlea. In it is an instrument that looks like a harp, a musical instrument. It has 6,000 strings. It sits in a pool of liquid. Each of these strings vibrate to a different frequency of sound. These sound waves strike them. They start vibrating. 18,000 nerve cells amplify those vibrations. They are converted into electrical impulses. They travel at the speed of 124 kilometers per hour to your brain. And instantaneously, you are able to understand what I am saying. Ar-Rahman. How kind and compassionate and merciful is Allah. What a great statement of His mercy and compassion is this ability to speak, to comprehend. So do not take this ni'mat for granted. Do not take this ni'mat for granted. Do not take this ni'mat for granted. This ni'mat of speech is your jannat or your jahannam. I am not saying it. Famous hadith of Mu'az bin Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Who is Mu'az? Mu'az is that Sahabi amongst the galaxy of Sahaba. Amongst the galaxy of Sahaba. This is that Sahabi that has a special distinction. That Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa directly addressed him. And said, Ya Mu'az, inni uhibbu. Mu'az, I love you. Mu'az, I love you. This, that is his caliber. This is that Sahabi... Allah's Rasul Sallallahu said on the day of Qiyamah, Mu'az will rise up with the flag of the ulama of my ummah in his hand. He will be the imam of the ulama of the ummah. That caliber, that rank and yet this masala of speech, this masala of speech, how many ahadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, my Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Guarantee me, guarantee me, guarantee me that you will control this tongue and I, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, guarantee you jannat. Control this tongue, this is your jannat or your jahannam. He said to Mu'az, Allah ukhbiruka bimilakil amri kullihi. 
bimilaki dhalika lengthy hadith time is limited i'm not going to the details in that hadith iman is mentioned salah is mentioned jihad is mentioned the, the whole of deen is mentioned and then at the end of the hadith rasulullah sallallahu says muaz should i not show you milaki hadha al-amr what is the nature the essence of everything your whole deen zarwatu thinsinami comes in one hadith what is the height what is the pinnacle in other words everything boils down to this he said bala ya rasulullah nabi of allah tell me what is it what is the essence what is the one thing that i cannot leave allah rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is he speaking to he's not speaking to an ordinary person he's speaking to the leader of the ulama of the ummah an intelligent person and yet because this matter is so important allah rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam Allahu Akbar like you would explain to a little child so no one can misunderstand and there is no ambiguity akhadha bi lisanihi nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam takes hold of his own tongue takes hold of his own tongue and says kuffa alayka hadha amlik alayka lisanak muaz salah zakat hajj jihad the whole of deen the khulasa the essence control this piece of flesh control this piece of flesh this is a snake this is a snake for the cobra and the venomous snakes that they are in the jungles of africa they have found serums for their poison but by the qasam of my allah i'm sitting on the mimbar of the masjid this snake there's no serum for its poison the poison and the hurt that the snake can inflict this will break marriages it will break homes it will break relationships it will break hearts and it will cause that kind of damage that a person will go into the cover also and you will carry that hurt with him people will stop talking to one another for years because of the wound that is inflicted by this snake there is nothing more dangerous nothing more dangerous one hand this is your jannat on the other hand many many riwayat many many riwayat nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said someone will say something he will say something what to and that too he will say it in such a way just as a joke to lighten up the majlis yet as a result of it tahwi biha fi jahannam Allah will throw him into jahannam a distance greater than the earth to the heavens because of what he what he uttered amlik alayka lisana kuffa alayka lisana he said muaz muaz the essence of deen the essence of deen the ihdas ihram you have to wait till mort and this ihram you can never open control this tongue control this tongue control muaz when he hears this He shocked salah zakat hajj jihad and my nabi says the essence of everything is this tongue so he says wahal yakubun he says ya rasul allah allah is going to take us to task for what is this tongue going to inflict such damage is this so important are we going to be taken to task because of the utterance of our tongue when nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam hears this from muaz he retorts takilat ka ummuk ya muaz muaz what's wrong with you muaz what's wrong with you understand hal yakubun nas hal yakubun nas ala wujuhihim wa fi riwayatin ala manakhirihim fi nar jahannam illa khasaid alsinatihim nas rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam says to muaz muaz there is nothing 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 not zina not sharab not qatl there is nothing there is no kabira guna there is no major sin that will cause more people of my ummah face down to be flung into jahannam illa khasaid al sinatihim like the utterance of the tongue will cause this like the utterance of the tongue will cause this this is your jannat or this is your jahannam 
If we learn no other lesson from Hajj, learn this lesson, Fala Rafat. Once Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Abu Zar, Ya Aba Zar, O Abu Zar, Ala ukhbiruka bi amalain khafifin maunatuhuma, azimin ajruhuma, lam talqa Allah bi mithlihima. Allahu Akbar. Such a mushfiq, such a kind, such a compassionate master and teacher like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is impossible to find. Allahu Akbar, look at this. Look at the manner in which Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa presents this. He says, O oh Abu Dhar, should I not show you something? Ala ukhbiruka, o ala adulluka, should I not show you something? Abu Dhar, should I not show you something? Before he tells him what it is, look at the description Rasulullah Sallallahu gives. It's like when somebody is, wants to make you understand the value of something, they, they present it in such a way that your mouth begins to salivate. You want to know, what is this? Khafifin ma'unatu Abu Zar, what I am about to tell you is very easy to do. Very little effort. Khafifin ma'unatu ma'am. No effort required. No effort. You don't have to break your back. You don't have to stand in tahajjud the whole night. You don't have to make wuzu in the bitter coal. You don't have to go four months and six months and eight months and one year in the path of Allah. Separate yourself from your family. What I'm about to show you, khafifin ma'unatuhuma. Very little effort. Contrary to this, azimin ajruhuma. Abu Zar, the reward, very great. Effort, very little. Khafifin ma'unatuhuma. Adimin ajruhuma, reward very great. How great? Allahu Akbar. What does Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? Lam talqa Allah bi mithlihima. No one, no one, no one on the day of judgment will meet Allah with anything that will carry more reward than this. Lam talqa Allah bi mithlihima. There's nothing that you can do in reward that will equal the reward of what I'm about to tell you. So what you would expect is going to be very difficult, lot of work, lot of hardship. But Nabi Salaam said, Khafifin, very less effort, maximum reward. No one will meet Allah with anything that will carry this reward. Abu Zad is jumping up and down. Ya Rasulullah, tell me what is this? Allahu Akbar, what is the first thing Nabi Salaam says? Assam, Assam, control the snake, keep quiet. Assam, keep silent. Don't speak. Don't speak. Allah has placed 32 locks in front of this tongue. And then in front of that, Allah has placed another main gate. 32 locks, physiologically, biologically, in front of this tongue. And then another main gate. Why? Because before you let the snake loose, think. Stop. Caution yourself. To speak requires effort. To keep silent, no effort required. Keep this tongue closed. No matter how angry, how upset, whether it's the wife, whether it's the staff, whether it's the child, whether it's your friend who you come into contact with. Ghibat, very, very nice to talk about somebody else. Very exciting. What? Ashaddu min zina my Nabi Salaam said, that is worse than committing zina. Today the masjid is not safe also. He looked at the Kaaba. He looked at the Kaaba. And he said, how beautiful you are. How sacred you are. How sanctimonious you are. And then my Nabi turned to a sahabi and he said to him, that know and understand, the is the dignity, honor of a mu'min is greater than that of the Kaaba. In other words, insult the Kaaba. It's a smaller sin than insulting your fellow Muslim brother. The pain that you will inflict with this tongue. My Nabi Sallallahu said, Abu Zar, Sahaba mentioned sometimes weeks would pass and he wouldn't utter a single word. This hadith is not stopping us from speaking. No. Don't speak what is incorrect. Don't hurt the feel. This the Allahu Akbar. We want to understand the effect of the harm of the tongue. Understand it in the context of seerah. Understand it in the context of seerah. My Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Mina, what did they do to him? They pelted him with stones. In Taif, three miles. 
three miles he was pelted with stones. He was persecuted in Uhud. What happened in Uhud? What happened in Uhud? Utba bin Abi Waqqas threw the rock. The rock smashed down on the face of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, causing his tut mubarak to become shaheed. He fell back. The back of his neck hit another rock. As a result of which Allah's Rasul sallallahu alaihi fell down unconscious. In other words, physical pain like we can't believe. And yet, for the people of Taif, what did Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam do? He made the istiqbal. When they came to accept Islam, he put up a tent for them, particularly in Masjid al Nabawi. He would he arrange food for them. Each day he would specially go and sit with the people of Taif, the same people that pelted him for three miles. One day he got late. He offered excuse. He said, please forgive me. I had my section of Quran which I had not completed. This is why I got late. I didn't come on time to sit with you people. Forgave them. In Uhud, Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, Udu Allah alayhim, make bad dua for them. He raised his hand, Allahumma mahdi qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamoon. Oh Allah, give hidayat to them because they don't know what they are doing. That was physical harm. When it came to the harm of the tongue, when he came to the harm of the tongue, just one incident to make us understand the difference. Directly from Sira, this is the heart of a Nabi, the bardasht of a Nabi, the khilm of a Nabi, the tolerance of a Nabi, we can't imagine. Mountain of tolerance, yet, yet, when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam leaves Medina Munawwara to proceed to Makkah, for Fateh Makkah, for the conquest of Makkah, now they are marching towards Makkah, on the way, Fazal bin Abbas, Abbas, the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Umm Fazal, his wife, Abdullah bin Abbas, Fazal bin Abbas, this family is coming towards Medina. They don't know that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has left for Makkah. They're coming towards Medina to accept Islam. They meet Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the way. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gladly accepts the Islam and says to them that you are the last of the Muhajireen. Because after this, the door to Hijrat will close. With them are another two Sahaba. Who are they? Abdullah bin Abi Umayya. Who is Abdullah bin Abi Umayya? He is the son of Atika bin Abdul Muttalib. Atika was the aunt, the daughter of Abdul Muttalib, the aunt of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the sister of Abu Talib. So one is his maternal cousin. With him is Abu Sufyan, famous Abu Sufyan bin Harb. We know this is Abu Sufyan bin Harith. Harith was the eldest son of Abdul Muttalib. Also the brother of Abu Talib, the brother of Rasulullah Wasallam's father, Abdullah, his son, Abu Sufyan bin Harith. So both are cousins, one from the father's side, one from the uncle, one from the aunt. They are with this kafla. When Nabi Wasallam hears that they have come to accept Islam, he says, do not even give them permission to enter. I have no need for the Islam. I am not prepared to accept the Islam. What was the reason? Rahmatul lil alameen. A mercy unto humanity. Yet, the pain of the heart, the hurt. What was the hurt? In Mecca, in Mecca, once the delegation of Quraysh, they sent for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The light of the heart of the Nabi is light. These people are going to accept Islam. Nabi Islam goes to them, he's happy. They present all sorts of unconscionable demands. Do this and do this and do this and do that. I'm getting, cutting the incident short, time has already run out. Then only we will accept you as Allah's Nabi. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, heartbroken because his hopes had been lifted up that they are going to accept Islam. Now they come with all these ridiculous requests. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to them that listen, what you are asking for, I cannot do that, I cannot even ask from Allah Ta'ala. Accept, if it is in your taqdeer to accept, Allah will guide you. Otherwise reject and then wait for Allah's decision. Heartbroken, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam leaves. Abdullah bin Abi Umayya, the son of Atika, he follows Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the cousin of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Muhammad, your people put all these requests in front of you. Why didn't you accept? Why didn't you accept? Your arrogance is such, na'uzubillah, that you refuse to accept. He says, now, if you get a ladder, and you go up to the heavens, and you go right up to Allah Ta'ala, 
And Allah Ta'ala gives you in writing that you are His Nabi and places His seal upon it. And then four malaika are witness to, to that. And they come down with you to say that you are Allah's Nabi. I'm still not prepared to accept. I won't accept Allah's seal. I won't accept that Allah's epistle. I won't accept Allah's angels. I won't accept the ladder from the heaven. I'm not prepared to ever accept that you are the Nabi of Allah. Quran mentions this لَن نُؤْمِنَ لَكَ حَتَّى تَفْجُرَ لَنَا مِنَ الْأَرْضِ يَنْبُوعَ أَوْ تَكُونَ لَكَ بَيْتٌ مِنْ زُخْرُفٍ أَوْ تَرْقَى فِي السَّمَاءِ وَلَن نُؤْمِنَ لُرِقِيكَ حَتَّى تُنَزِّلْ عَلَيْنَا كِتَابًا نَقْرَأُ This entire insult of Abdullah bin Abi Umayyah is mentioned in the Quran also. There's no time to go into detail. This hurt. What? Abdullah bin Abi Umayyah didn't fling any rocks. He didn't do what the people of Taif did. But this hurt was the hurt of the tongue. This pain affected the heart of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So many years later, who was Abu Sufyan bin Harith? He used to recite poems in the gullies and alleys of Makkah insulting Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Again, no stone, no rock, no stick. But the pain and the hurt of the tongue affected a Nabi of Allah to this extent that his own family members, he refused to accept the Islam. Umm Salma radiallahu anha, Ummul Mu'mineen, one of the mother of the believers, the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa also the sister of Abdullah bin Abi Umayyah. Allah had given her intelligence. Allah had given her understanding, perception of a very high level. She interceded, Ya Rasulullah, you are a person of sila rahmi. You join family ties. They are your family. Accept them. They are sorry. They have come now to accept Islam. If you are going to turn them away, they are going to be destroyed forever and ever. With this intercession over and over again of Umm Salma, finally Rasulullah Wasallam relented and he allowed them to come and he accepted their tawbah and he accepted their Islam and he forgave them. The point or the lesson from Sira, فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجْ فَلَا رَفَثْ This ihram, this ihram of the tongue, this tongue is either your jannat or your jahannam. With your wife, with your children, with your staff, in your home. Today we understand deendari, tahajjud, zikrullah, tilawat of Quran, going in the path of Allah. All that is necessary, we can't deny that. But with that, my respected brothers, with that is akhlaq. With that is character. Ulama say, Husne akhlaq, Husne kalam ke bagheer na mumkin hai. They say, beautification of one's akhlaq, making your home, making your family. Now nikahs are to take place. To become a wife or a husband that is sukoon and peace. For the home in this world to be jannat on this earth. For your daily life to be jannat. For you to be somebody that people are comfortable with. What did my Nabi say? Who is the greatest Muslim? He said the one who when he opens his mouth, flowers come out, thorns don't come out. Man salim al muslimuna min lisanihi wa People are safe. People are safe. You are not a snake. You are not harming. You are not hurting. Insulting, swearing, picking, ghibat. Chugli, backbiting, hurting, inflicting. My respected brothers, this is like a hole in a bucket. All your tahajjud, all your zikrullah, all your tilawat, all your ibadat, all your striving in the path of Allah, sitting in the sohbat of a sheikh, all that. Allah protect us. This is like that hole in the bucket that will wipe away all that if we won't learn to control this. Abu Zar, Abu Zar, should I not show you two things? Two things. Very little effort, maximum reward. No one will meet Allah with anything that will carry reward like this. My Nabi said, Assam, silence. In other words, avoid unnecessary speech. Wa husnul khuluk. And because it is linked to it, beautification of your akhlaq and character.